on guys, welcome to the video. So today I actually have probably the best player I've ever had in a video coming to train with me today. Uh, I'm really excited for it. His name's Rubio Ruben. I'll let him tell you more about his story and where he's played and everything, but uh, it's pretty impressive. <laughs> Rubio, what's going on, man? I don't know you live, I didn't know you live like this far away. Yeah, it's, How's it going, it's a while. It's good to meet you. Good, man. Yeah, good to Hello. meet you. Hi. Yeah, this is Mimi. Nice, nice to meet, meet you. you. Man, I watch your videos for so long. Bro, I swear, I've been watching his videos for so long. Do you know what's funny, though? It's because uh, I'll introduce you a little bit. Yeah. So, we both played at Westside Metro yeah. pretty much growing up. Mm -hmm. You were 94? Uh, 96. 96. Yeah. Holy. I remember like hearing about you and like yeah. killing it. Like, this guy scoring five goals. Like, it's nothing of the club teams. <laughs> And then all of a sudden you went over to FC Utrecht. Yeah, and then I went out there. It was good, it was good. I mean, I liked it, but now I'm back here at Cholos and yeah. stuff. I don't know if you heard of them and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'm down there and stuff. It's so different. And you, you know, were just at Estadio Azteca? Yeah, I was just there uh, on Saturday. I played 10 minutes, but we got killed, man. Yeah. Zero. It was it was terrible. I mean, yeah, I looked up the score, but... Yeah, they're, I mean, they're a good team and, you know, we had our opportunities, but that's... That's football. So Rubio's already had his full team training session this morning too, so it's gonna be lighter. Um, but yeah, he drove all the way up here just to train, so I'm really excited for it. Should be good. It's gonna be light, a little short, intense, but sharp. Um, yeah, so we'll get into it. All right, so Rubio, I was just saying, like, you're the like probably the best player I've had on my YouTube channel you know, mm -hmm. ever. So I just want you to basically say, like, we both grew up in Portland. Mm -hmm. So just going from Portland, your kind of youth career, how did you kind of progress up into signing the contracts that you did and go into where you went? Yeah. No, I mean, thank you for so long. <laughs> I don't know how to react to that. But no, I mean, I just grew up in Portland, born and raised in Portland. Um, my parents are Mexican Guatemalan. And, you know, I just had a love for soccer and stuff like that. Um, and I started when I was probably like competitive, like nine, 10 years old at Westside Metros, you know, where you were at and stuff yeah. like that. And um, just kind of stuck with it. And I think around 13, 14, like I kind of realized it, like I was like, you know, I watched soccer games, Mexican League, and I would just be like, man, like, you know, I kind of want to play pro and stuff. And from there, I just, you know, stayed motivated, you know, kind of do what you're doing now and stuff. Like, you know, just train every day and like, you know, because the American system is kind of, we both know it's, you know, it, it's not the best. It's not the best. You have to find ways to like get better and stuff. And, you know, that was the way I was thinking when I was little at like 14, 15. And luckily, like it kind of worked out. And I was lucky enough to go to residency, be part of the 17 program there. And then... Um, from there, I moved to uh, Holland when I was 17, 16, and signed a contract there when I was 18. I was, um, you know, part of the first team then, and then, you know, was there for three years, and then after that, I went to Denmark, Norway a little bit. Didn't go, you know, as planned, and now I'm at Tijuana Cholos and stuff like that. that transition from going from Westside Metro's like the club team in Portland yeah. to all of a sudden now you're at FC Utrecht a huge club over in Europe like how was that full transition there mm -hmm. do you think you like was it a big shock was the play different like all that stuff I mean it was at the beginning it was hard you know like leaving family like I know like we're both used to it and stuff being away from home and friends and stuff like that I think that was the hardest part I think also like the confidence wise not knowing the language not really knowing like the style of play, if you're gonna be like liked, if you know, people really wanna be your friend and stuff like that. And um, just trying to find that confidence on the field and be like, look, I deserve to be here. You yeah. know what I mean? Like they signed me for a reason and stuff like that. You know, cause at West Side, you know, your buddies, you know what I mean? The yeah. people you grow up with and stuff like that from school or like just in general, your best friends, that's where you meet your best friends and stuff like that. So um, just going to a different place is definitely different, learning a new language, but you know. Did you get homesick? Yeah, I got homesick a lot, man. I think I got more homesick when, you know, obviously when soccer wasn't going too hot. Yeah. And, um, 
you know, when you're not playing and stuff, and, you know, just realizing like you come home after like a game and you didn't play yeah. and you're just like alone in your room and, <laughs> and you're just like have your apartment, it's just you and you realize it like, you're like, what am I doing over here? I'm miles away from my family. Exactly. Like, I'm not even playing. Yeah. Like, it just, it, your mind is like your best and like worst enemy. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And then you just like, you just kind of like learn from it. And use those experiences just take control and stuff. Yeah. I think that's what, one of the reasons why also I came back to TJ, you know, being closer to home and stuff and being able to like be in America like every other day and stuff was something I was like also looking forward to and stuff. But um, yeah, I definitely got homesick for sure. What do you like more, San Diego or Portland? Uh, I mean, San Diego the weather is nice. Yeah, but Portland is like home, man. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like my family's there, my best friends are there. season going with the Cholos like how are you liking it there uh, I, lo I love it so far last season was better than la like this season I think you know I obviously played more and stuff and you know, was part of the team more but um, you know we we obviously made playoffs last season made it to semifinals uh, we didn't win but um, this season kind of struggling right now haven't made a playoffs yet we have four games left and you know we pretty much have to win you know all four games to make it you know and to put ourselves in the best position possible so you know that's what I'm hoping for I mean, because making playoffs is great, yeah. and you know, obviously to play more and be part of the team. But it's been tough this season. You know, I haven't played as much, only in the cup. But you know, that's football, man. You just kind of have to ride that wave, stay yeah. neutral, stay true to yourself, and you know, just keep working. You know, that's all you can do, to be honest. Is it like a surreal experience sometimes playing against like you? You just played in a Estadio Azteca, like yeah. you watch these games growing up. Mm -hmm. Is it like a surreal experience ever to be now that you're actually in the league and playing and getting minutes and stuff? Yeah, I mean, la last season when like when I came to Cholos, my first game was away at the Estadio Azteca. Really? For a new coach, starting, <laughs> and it was my first game. Wow. And, like that was like something else, man. I couldn't explain it. I think like honestly, like I talk about it now because I don't like you know, it was like six months ago. But yeah. like, I almost <laughs> peed my pants before the game. Not gonna lie, like I just couldn't handle it. Like it was like, like you know, you felt the like the pressure of just like man, a new club, first game, first yeah. start, new coach, and um, you know, you just didn't know how you're gonna adapt to level and stuff like that. And I ended up we ended up tying zero zero at the Steca, which is you know a good result, you know, especially you know for us and. Um, yeah, so it was great. You know, played all 90 and stuff. And you know, this time around, I came off the bench, but it was still like it's still a surreal experience, man. The stadium is unbelievable. You yeah. know, yeah, I just I, honestly like I want to play in a game against Mexico or like oh, yeah, you yeah. know in one of those games and stuff like that. That'd be something else, man. Like the whole stadium is full, 80,000 fans. <laughs> Like just imagine taking a PK. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that'd be something else. Yeah, man. That, that'd be that'd be the sickest. Yeah. That'd be like the dream. Right? Yeah. You've had some uh, some U.S. men's national team caps. Yeah. How how's that been? You played for under Jurgen Klinsmann. You've got yeah. an assist. Yeah. So how's take me through that? How's that been? Yeah, it was crazy. I mean, when I was um, 18, you know, uh, when I was playing for Utrecht, uh, it kind of was going well. And um, I remember I got a call from a California number. I answered it, 
and his like German accent and stuff. And I he just, just straight like, called you out of nowhere. Yeah, like, just straight up called me, and I was like, he's like Rubio, and I was like, hello. He's like, this is Jurgen. I was like, yeah, co like coach, you know, you talk to coach at the time. He's like, oh, like how's it going and stuff. You're doing really well for Utrecht. Like, you don't want to call you in and stuff for this next camp. And I think like that was my, you know, getting called in for the first time. And you know, when I got off the phone, I was crying. I was calling my parents and stuff. I was like, I'm going in and stuff like that. And you just realized it, like, you know, like. You're there, you know what I mean? Like you come so far, far along, and that was always a dream to play for the national team and stuff like that. And uh -huh. uh, you know, when you get the call, it's the first call. It's, it, was, it was surreal, man. I couldn't explain it. I had so many feelings and stuff like that. And even now, you, you know, sometimes I get called in and stuff. But obviously, if I'm playing for children, I get called. I have better chance of getting called in. And if I'm playing well and scoring, then it's different. But um, yeah, you just realize it. Like yeah, it's definitely you know you're grateful and stuff. It's the memory that I'll have forever in yeah. life. You know that call when you called me for the first time so you know that was pretty that was pretty awesome man because you What do you think is the best thing about being a pro? Like, what is your best memory, the best experience? What's like the moment or whatever that's made it like the most worth it? All the sacrifice, everything. I mean, just, I think scoring and just being able to like play in an atmosphere, like where the fans are just like screaming your name or just like people are watching you to like, you know, play yeah. soccer and stuff, which is like surreal to think about. And just being able to like go to training every day and wake up and like be like, you know, happy and stuff that you're gonna train and stuff like that. It's like. That's like the best feeling. Um, obviously, scoring goal is just it's, it's something else. You know? What's your best goal you've scored? Like most best exciting goal. goal. The most exciting goal is probably against uh, Colombia in the U20 World Cup. You know, we had we scored that goal and we, we went through to the quarterfinals that yeah. tournament, as well as uh, Cholos last season. I had a pretty cool goal as well for them. So, and Holland, I scored like a couple, four or five goals there, but you know, nothing like crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I scored against Ajax at. Really? Amsterdam Arena, so. Damn, that's. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's. No, just, no, know. but like, I mean, like, surreal goals was like U20 World Cup. We you know representing yeah. the country and we go into the quarterfinals and stuff like that. So. up you had this vision of playing pro yeah. what's something that you think is different than you expected or like the the lowest you've been in your career or yeah. stuff like that I mean just like like the, like confidence man like soccer like soccer is like it's crazy and weird sometimes you know what I mean like you know when I got injured and stuff like that was like the hardest time for me it's like coming back and like you know reprocessing or recuper like recuperating your body to like do the things that you did before was like the hardest you know trying to find that balance like of just like keeping yourself up every day and be like you're gonna get there you're gonna get there yeah and like you'd get back 
and like you wouldn't be in the lineup you wouldn't even be close to the lineup and just be like am i good enough you start like i wouldn't like you wouldn't say like doubt yourself because you still believe in yourself and stuff like that but just like you're like way behind because of this injury and stuff like that so i think just the injuries are obviously the hardest and just like mentally you know like when you're at your best when you're playing i mean when you're playing and you're scoring goals and stuff like that you're like no one can touch you man yeah but when you're like not scoring goals like people on the outside like saying like looking at you like hey like you gotta score and stuff then it's like okay like you know you feel that pressure and stuff i think just like the mental games that soccer can bring mm-hmm. is definitely the hardest part and i think like that is in everything in life you know what i mean just constantly um having like those those problems of you know if you you know can reach your full potential if you know what i mean yeah so, yeah because you you've had a lot of pressure put on you yeah for sure no i mean i think most of it was you know myself obviously i wanted to do one stuff and as well as like my parents you know we coming up like not super i wouldn't say like wealthy and stuff like that you know because obviously there's you know, people that struggle more than us but you know i think that was also motivation for me was to like get out and like, be able to like, give them something back um so luckily, you know, I was able to get out and be able to do, you know, do some things for them. So yeah, that's super cool, you know. Like, so yeah, that's awesome. Like I swear, like I was just like caught up in the yeah the train. Like, oh, I need to be bigger, stronger, faster. Bigger, stronger, faster. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I was like, like I would even play. I'm like, bro, I just feel like a soccer player. Bro, for real. When I got hurt, bro, like that was like my biggest thing. Like, oh, I'm gonna get bigger. Like, yeah. I regret like trying to like do that and stuff. Like now, like I don't even worry about gym yeah. anymore. It's just like keeping it, you know what I mean? Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, yeah. Maintenance, because if your muscles are strong, everything's in balance. You exactly. Prevent some injuries. Prevention and stuff like that. Yeah, sure. that's yeah. It took me a long time to realize that. I think I was 24 when I really came to that conclusion. Yeah. What do you usually do, uh, like all day long after training and stuff? Uh, honestly, man, like I just chill. I'm trying to get back into school, see, see if I can like go, but. Pretty much just like talk to my girlfriend. Yeah, chill. Fruit in the morning with some almonds and stuff. Yeah. I don't really like to have a lot of like something heavy before training. Yeah. And for dinner, uh, for lunch, I just have like whatever they have, like a salad usually with some rice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, That's so, uh, I miss the St. Louis gave us breakfast and lunch every day. It's yeah. so nice. Yeah, and then man. And you save money too. Man. Save money and then yeah. you get to go home. I don't think I bought like my actual food in like <laughs> a month, man. Like I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. People always love following my channel because like I it's like an insider experiences to a pro yeah and so like you get to see the training and you get to see uh, tips and advice do you have any like yeah. big piece of advice that you have for anybody watching this that wants to be a pro yeah Is something that you think that you wish you would have heard at 13 14 15 mm-hmm. um, I just think like if you want something you just gotta like work for it you know what I mean and just do everything like for it and you know even like for me when I was little like I didn't really enjoy like like going out with friends i just was like passionate about the ball like that's all i wanted to do you know what i mean yeah. like, that's all like like everything i watch with soccer like youtube videos like about like soccer players back then ronaldinho chicharito like yeah. i'd watch it you know what i mean like, i spent hours and hours watching it and like i just say like have a passion for it and you know if you really want to do it you'll know if that's what you want to do you know what i mean mm-hmm. so i just think my advice is that like if you really want it you know it's going to work out you know what i mean but you got to really really you gotta want make it, it uh like consume your entire life exactly consume your entire life and that's like the beauty of it and like it has its pros and cons you know what i mean but you know i think at the end of the day you know because soccer is it's a you know soccer football is a competitive world you know what i mean and you know there's a lot of things to it you know that comes into play so i just think like being passionate and giving it everything you've got is just ultimately like all i can say you know giving football like your whole life Perfect. All right, yeah. man. I appreciate it. No, for sure. Cool, man. That's awesome. <laughs> we can drive down, or I just can drive down to uh, to San Diego. For sure. And then get someone down there too. But yeah. No, for good. sure. But you should. Uh, yeah, you guys should come check out a game. Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe this so, Saturday. That'd yeah. be sick. We have two games left at home this season, so uh-huh. you guys don't they don't feel pressure me to come. This When's season. the what's the last one? The last one is we play Morelia at home, which is two weeks from now. He's got the Yeezys on. <laughs> man. You're old. <laughs> Okay. Like, I have one more They're old. They're like three or four years old. They look super clean. I'm a minim- uh, what is it called? Minimalist? Minimalist? Min- yeah. Minimalist? Minimalist? That's the word. I don't even know the word. I just call myself that. I'm a something. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah, actually it dirty. I watched it today. So. It's nice. Yeah. Where'd you get it? I got it uh, in like what, two months ago. Yeah, well, I have about sounds good. Uh, the game and on Sunday too. All right. Sounds good, man. Yeah. Good to Bye. see you. Good to meet you.
too. Yeah, you too. So that was the training session, guys. It was really, really light. Like I said, Rubio had a very like intense fitness finishing and just a really just kind of grueling training session in the morning. So it was light. We just juggled, got some touches, and the main purpose of that was just kind of for us to meet and for them to uh, share his story to you guys. So I really hope that you follow along on his Instagram and his social media platforms, kind of follow his journey as a professional soccer player because he has a really, really cool story so far. Um, hopefully I can get him in another video. Hopefully, hopefully we can get a more intense training session in the future. But, um, but yeah, it was really cool. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Um, yeah, that's it. All right, peace. <laughs>